Hello you wallets full of old Chad Kroger skin flakes. Jim Sterling here and this is Watch Dogs 2, which is out, I think tomorrow, at the time of publishing this. It's not out tomorrow when I'm recording this. I recorded this some significant time before then, actually. Like over the weekend in New York, which is where I still am, eating a bagel New York style. Anyway, this is Watch Dogs 2, which is based in San Francisco, which isn't New York. It's a different city, mate. Different city. This is some single player footage. This is me using a new toy, the air drone, to basically mark territory, mess around with guys. You know, got all your badges here. They're guarding a museum, which is a kind of Scientology mockery place. Um, people quite famously know about the, the Martin Shkreli, Martin Skrillex, whatever it's called, uh, parody that's in this game. There's a lot of that in this. This game is going to be very dated, I think, in a half a decade's time. But it is very good, I've got to say. And I say that with a caveat that I quite like the first one. Um, I, I, li I like the first one a lot. And I know history has not been too kind to it. And it's got its problems. Aidan Pierce is detestable, uh, with or without his iconic baseball cap. But Marcus here, Marcus Holloway, the new protagonist, has an actual personality. And he's likeable. He's still a dick. Uh, he's still an asshole. But he's actually got, you know, some sort of idealism going on. And he's got this nerdy streak, which is very affable. Uh, in fact, all of the characters from Dead Sec, like the, you know, the protagonist faction, uh, very likeable characters. Uh, the writing can be a little cringy at times, just a little bit. But overall, they pay this lighthearted, silly homage to hacker spaces and all that kind of culture. And and it's a good story with good characters, and, and, and it's funny. Which is what a game like this should be, because this is a game about cities that are run by operating systems, where even cars have microchips in them that are linked to, you know, the street lamp across the road. It's, it's an utterly stupid premise, and the first game fucked that up by Ubisofting everything, so we've got yet another just grizzly angry dude who's avenging a dead family member, uh, like most Ubisoft protagonists. And he's a po-faced wanker trying to do all this hacking stuff, and it doesn't work. Like, can you imagine Aiden Pierce with his iconic baseball cap actually using, like, that air drone that I just used? Or there's a little remote control car that jumps about and hacks things. Like, that's too fun for that miserable tit. Uh, whereas this character has a real sense of fun, and conversations that actually remind me of Deadly Premonition. Um, there is banter about various movies. Uh, there's a quest that has a lot of short circuit references in it, including uh, the main character singing the Los Locos song, which is just a lovely touch. Uh, and this is a game that just leans into the stupidity of the general premise. And I mean that. And if, if you know anything about how, you know, what my opinion is of, of games and, and culture in general, uh, you'll know that when I call something stupid in a certain way, I do not mean that in a bad manner at all. And I certainly don't mean that here. Uh, but anyway, as you can see, I'm, I'm doing expert hacking manoeuvres here. This is footage taken from the version I was uh, given to review from Ubisoft. So this is PS4 share footage, you know, how I do these types of things, pre-recorded stuff, just chatting over the stuff I played, and I think we're about to go look at the, probably the, the one part of the game I don't necessarily care for. I don't hate it, but it does get in the way of all the, the more immediately fun hacking stuff, um, but there are actual specific mechanical hacking mini-games in this. We can see it here if we go into Hacker Vision, uh, or whatever they like to call it. Uh, which games love these days. Uh, you can see all these panels and, and figures on the wall. And it's, you know, it's a very typical rotate the pipes to j join the circuits together uh, and, and that sort of thing. So I, I should have sped this bit up, but I didn't. Excuse me, I'm leaning on a creaky desk a little bit, but that's fine. Just watch me twist some little pipes about. Isn't that fun for everyone? Uh, the review of this um, should be going up at the exact same time as this video, so if you want more expanded thoughts, feel free to look at that on the gymquisition.com. I was interrupted in my puzzling here by a couple of guards who were uh, 
just hanging about, getting in my way, so I've got to deal with them first. Happens sometimes. Sometimes you you got to do these these mini games, and and it's hard to concentrate because you've also got to worry about being rumbled while you do it. So that's a thing that happens. But yeah, I was I was surprised by just how much I love playing this game. Uh, I like again. I like the first one probably more than a lot of people did. Uh, it's it's somewhat popular to dislike the first Watch Dogs, and I understand that. It did not live up to the ridiculous amounts of hype that was given to it, and the bullshot stuff was you know beyond the pale. Uh, but the final product I liked, and one thing I liked about it was it had a kind of a gormless charm to it. You see, I was just using the the old classic messing with their headset there to hack and makes an unbearable noise that they can't handle. Lots of different ways to, to fuck with, um, you know, enemy, like NPC enemies. Um, stopping cars and making their electrical stuff mess up, setting traps. Uh, I was planning to be a bit more commentary-ish with this, but I was doing like I did with... Um, Infinite Warfare recently, just more or less giving you a miniature review, which I don't think there's anything wrong with that, per se. Do you? Do you have a fucking problem with that? <laughs> of course you don't, it's fine. We're all friends here. Okay, so... Actually, the funny thing about this bit is the interruption from the guards gave me a moment of sudden clarity. Because I was like, I wanted to... I knew I wanted this footage to be in the video, in the Jim Pressions video. Um, but I was like, this bit's going to slow it down. I might have to chop this bit out or speed it up or whatever. But the guard's interruption broke me from it because I thought this is incomprehensible. But then I got back into it. I was like, it suddenly worked and, and, and snapped for me. So there we go. We're heading towards the end of... Well, not the end of this mission, but the end of... The main thrust of the mission. There's some dialogue here that I'm just talking over. Um, but that character, Wrench, he's an interesting character. I think a lot of people are going to hate Wrench. But I love him. He is... I would qualify him as, as adorkable. Uh, he wears a mask with glasses on, like electronic glasses, that their eyes change to display his emotions. And he is just a complete, you know, total pop culture nerd. And and he's cringy, but it works. He's cringy, but it works in this in the context of this game in the world they finally made for Watch Dogs. I mean, this is similar. This reminds me of Titanfall Two in a way, almost. Where like I wish this was. This feels like the real start of the series. I just noticed that the PS4 share puts a Watch Dogs logo at the top right corner of this video. And that just looks like a fucking advertisement. I can assure you I do not want that there, and I would not have that there if I had my bloody druthers. Thanks, Ubisoft. There's an oh, Ubisoft section for you, for the Jimquisition. Um, yeah, speaking of which... Speaking of which, actually, uh, I was surprised I did get a review copy in the end. Uh, that was fun. Here it is. Um... Ubisoft actually haven't blacklisted me yet, where EA have and, um, you know, Konami have, and it looks like one half of Square Enix has. But anyway, that's the end of that. Now, what I'm going to show you for, uh, I think, the rest of the video, really, is multiplayer. Um, Dark Souls comparisons are trite, but they clearly had that in mind with this. Uh, if you play with the online section on, if it gets annoying, you can turn it off. But similar to the first game, you can be invaded by other players and they will try and hack your data. Uh, and you can do the same to other players. There's co-op as well. And it's really, really seamless. Uh, one thing I like about it, it really is drop in, drop out. Just suddenly an event will spark. And it'll be like, there's a player nearby you who you can hack and troll and mess with if you want. Or there's one nearby trying to hack you. And if you're in the middle of a main mission, it can be a bit annoying because sometimes it'll be like, oh, you can't hack this if you're being invaded. Um, so if it gets annoying, you can turn it off. But for the most part, I've found it difficult to dislike it. I'm always happy to do the diversion just to mess with someone in some way. Uh, I'm probably going to sneeze in a second. 
Uh, and so I apologize for that when that happens. But you see, the it can be a bit overwhelming about this uh, this game. This game can be a bit overwhelming. Let's rephrase that, Jim, um, because there's so much happening, uh, more so than in the first Watch Dogs. This person really gave their the, themselves away um, by doing that. But there we are, meeting them. So I can't remember it. I think this person had already hacked my data. It's a kind of cat and mouse thing where... You, oh no, this is Bounty Hunt. This is something different. Um, sometimes players are being chased by the cops and you can join in. So that's what this is. This is Bounty Hunting. Uh, I'm trying to chase this guy down. And I hacked the sewage pipe below there. Because, you know, they've got computer chips in them. And there we go. Neutralize the player. Sorry, IPA is a okay. You're not okay because you got shot with a shotgun, which is what shotguns do. So, this is this is the 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 main sort of multiplayer that they push. This is being hacked, being invaded. Um, I'm trying to find the hacker, and it makes you paranoid because somewhere in the purple, you see the the mini map at the bottom there. Somewhere in this purple circle, they're there, and you gotta find them, and you scan people to try and, and look for them. Uh, I think this is the first time I was hacked, and I forgot to use, um, you know, hacker <laughs> vision uh, to find them. But when you engage the hacker vision, uh, sorry, the hacker vision, then you can see everyone highlighted in purple as potential targets. But I was doing this. I was doing this analog. Analog style. And I guessed correctly. Conspicuous parked van. And that's the player. Which I know, but the game doesn't know I know yet because I didn't scan the car. You're supposed to, if I L1 and, and hit the car, then it will highlight that person. But I didn't, I didn't do it here. It was weird. Like, just letting the person go away. But I realised the hacker had to come back to the circle. And I forget. I'm trying to remember why. I did include this because it was fun. There we go. There we go. Now the chase is properly on. They just they had to come back to try and get their data. But it was an odd situation for them. Because normally you're rumbled and it triggers this part of the game. Now it's a neutralised thing where the hacker has to get... Like, create enough distance from you and maintain that distance for a set amount of time. But they couldn't do that. They knew that I knew who they were. But they couldn't escape. Because they, they had to complete the hack until I triggered this stuff. So it was an interesting situation that I kind of accidentally contrived. But quite a thrilling chase here. As they, they duck around the corner just before I shoot them, get into another car. This was actually a really good chase. Um, you know, I wasn't playing particularly well, but it did make for a, it, ma it makes for a fun video. I, f I feel, I mean, I'm the one publishing the video, so I probably shouldn't be the one to judge, but yeah. And you can still use your hack tools and stuff. Uh, I know at some point in this video, I s foolishly ignore a warning that the sewage system in front of me has been hacked. But they can fuck with me and I can fuck with them. Um, later on in the game and later on in this video, uh, I've got access to a, uh, a thing that can hack cars directly. And you can make them steer out of control or you can make them go forward, back, left, right. Which is a brilliant PvP tool. It is a brilliant PvP tool and I'll show you how that works. Um, at its most obvious, you can steer their car out of control. Um, in one... Uh, multiplayer thing that I didn't actually capture. I steered... Oh, no, no, it was single player. I was being chased by the cops and I, I pressed the button and it veered to the left and fell off a bridge. It was brilliant. But, uh... Yep, still trying my luck, but couldn't get him. Couldn't get him here. Still going for it. Still going after Damp Punk, though. Oh, there's the, Shaz the Shazam app. It's got an app that's basically Shazam. Um... Like I said about overwhelming, there's so much stuff. The Ubisoft bloat is definitely there. But how how demoralizing must that have been for Damp Punk right there? One second away from getting out of dodge, 
but I, I just closed the gap. Like I said, a thrilling chase. This is like Game of fucking Thrones. Why aren't you impressed? So, still continuing the chase. The other, um, the other clips I have of, of PvP are a lot shorter, because I got a lot better. Um, at the time of recording, I was... I won't be when the game launches. There's always that glorious thing when you're playing against, you know, game journal shit munchers or early adapters, early adapters who, you know, got it off the back of a truck or whatever. Is I tend to be the best in the world temporarily, as I was with Riggs. If I tried to play Riggs now, I'd no way would I be anywhere near the leaderboards. Um, but here, it's still going on, still going off to dump. But anyway, right now, in terms of the hacker invasions, I'm like, I think I'm like world. I was second best, and I'm first best on something. But anyway, there we go. We finally got a sewage pipe bursting. It destroyed the car. They got out. I shot them down. That's how it. That's how it's done. And this is oh, IPA is a okay back again. The person I uh, gunned down in the bounty hunt trying to hack me. And this is how it should be done. So we've got these purple figures here, and they're all potential. They they could all be the player. It's nice and paranoid, um, but they could be hidden somewhere really well. They could be trying to hide in plain sight by just walking along. Um, you don't know. And sometimes it, 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 you look at it like this and you think, well, you know, it can't be that hard to hide. Uh, it can't be that easy to hide, or it can't be that hard to find a hiding person. But I got the phrase in the end. But it can be deceptive. I'm, I'm actually. Um, and I'll show you how I do it, but when I'm hacking someone, uh, there's some good ways of doing it. I actually got a, I think this is the person who sent me a message afterwards. No, it's someone for one of these videos, because I ended up running over a lot of potential hackers and they just sent me a message back that just said, just run down like a dog. So this is me hacking someone, and this is what I do. I use the hacked car um, uh, upgrade. I upgraded my, my abilities so that I can hack vehicles. So, this person knows they're being hacked, this, this character um, with the red name in the background, they know they're being hacked, they're looking for me, they've probably got their hacker vision going. Um, they could easily find me in a car here, I'm in plain sight, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ducking down, but that won't protect me for long, if he threw a drone up or what, he'd, he'd find me. He wouldn't have too much trouble finding me, but, what I'm doing is, here we go, steering cars out of control, making... NPC cars behave erratically, not not like they're behaving to, you know, scripted AI algorithms. It's a clever little way of fucking with them, because it diverts their attention. If this guy got too close to me, I'd steer a car behind them, and they'd have to turn around, they'd hear the screeching, think maybe someone's panicking because they're being rumbled. So you can see how they, they, they're responding to it. It's, it's a wonderful little psychological, like this, look. It just, for a split second, makes them think maybe I'm trying to mount a getaway. And because so much activity was going on over there, it it really threw them. Because all their attention is over there. And that was that. That was, that was the full event. They never rumbled me in time, so I just sat there, messed around with the environment, and, and got the data. This is the person, I think, who messaged me afterwards because they were not they weren't hiding that person is clearly the player don't need to even identify them just there we go <laughs> that was my favorite one and that person did message me afterwards uh, just to lament in how ignoble their end was so that that amused me a lot uh, this one's going to go into fast speedy times, so I'm going to stop and let it take over. Okay, so I'm almost complete. Completed the hack, the person stood there confused, wondering what went on, and I decided to be a dick. Dick move. And that's how we hack her. So that was good. 
<laughs> that really was an asshole thing to do. But I had to take it. I just had to take it. Oh, I'm going to stop talking now. The video's over. But enjoy a glitch. This has only happened once, but there are some fun glitches. And this is one of them. So I'm going to go, and you can watch the rest of this in peace. Enjoy!